Hello everyone. The roadmap for this tutorial is as follows. We'll start with sprite renderer and its properties. Next we discuss materials, shaders and textures. In this we discuss how to add materials to a 2D object and how to add lighting to a 3D game object. Then we look at how to create sprite masks in Unity. Sprite masks are related with mask interaction property of the sprite renderer. In the end we discuss how to change sprite from the backend script. So let's begin. This is an empty project. I'll create a sprite in this project. The way to do that is by going to game object, 2D object, sprite. You see that a new sprite has come onto it. Now the main part is the sprite renderer. Now the sprite renderer has some properties. The first property is the sprite. Now the sprite property defines what sprite do you want in your scene. For example, if you have this car body, if you drag onto it, you'll see that a car has appeared onto our scene. Similarly, if you drag and drop this ball, you'll see that a ball has come onto the scene. The size of the ball is big. Now, in order to scale this ball, what you need to do is, you need to go to the import setting of this ball and change the pixels per unit. Now here, the size of this ball is 2048 by 2013. Pixels per unit defines how much units of your game object do you want in one unit of Unity. So here, since it's 2048, I can specify it 2048 here and click on apply. So immediately you see that the ball has scaled down. We'll call it circle. The next property is the color. Now the color property helps you to change the color or tint the color of this game object. So if I click on it and select red, you'll see that its color has changed. Basically, the color multiplies with whatever color is present on the game object. The next property is the flip. The flip property flips the game object along the checked axis. So to understand this well, I'll drag and drop this car game object again onto the circle. And I'll select the flip X. So we'll see that this car has flipped on its X axis. Similarly, if I click on Y, it will flip on its Y axis. Reverted this back to the ball. Inside the circle, I'll drag and drop this square sprite. So at once it changes its image. Now the next property we discuss is the material. Now the default material that is attached is the sprites default. Whenever a new sprite renderer is created in Unity, then the sprites default material is assigned to it. The sprites default layer won't be affected by any lightings in the scene. So if you want that your game object responds to light, then you have to select a different material with a different shader. So here we'll first change the material of this game object and change its color. So for doing that, I have created a materials folder I'll right click and create a material. I'll name it red. I'll change the shader. Now the material has the various properties in it and, and a shader dictates what properties and what textures a material can have. So at present it's set to standard. In order to change the color of this game object, I'll have to change the shader. Now if I keep this standard as it is, then this game object won't be affected by any lights. So what I have to do is I have to change this shader sprites diffuse. Here, I can change the color of it. I set it to red. Now simply drag and drop this material onto our sprite. So you can see that it has changed its color. Now the material property is mainly used for 3D lightings. So I'll quickly demonstrate to you the materials, shaders and textures. I'll go to game object, 3D object, cube. Now see that the cube is dark. It is not lit. That is because it needs a light that focuses on it. So now to bring light here, I just right click light and directional light. So immediately you see that this has lit up. Now you can change the position of this light to say somewhere to the top so it does not come into our scene view. I'll select this cube. I'll scale it up a little bit. Suppose to say 2 and 2. I'll call this cube wall. I'll create a new material and name it blue wall. I'll keep the shader to standard. I'll change the albedo to blue and I'll drag and drop this blue onto this. So you see that it has changed its color. Now what I'll do is I'll apply a texture onto this wall. So I create a new material, create material. What I'll do is I'll change the shader from standard to diffuse. Now as soon as you select diffuse, you will get the option of selecting a texture. So there are some other properties here as well. Diffuse, then specular, bumped specular. So I'll just select diffuse at the moment. I'll select a texture. Now I have downloaded a brick texture. It is uniform texture. I'll select it. So now you see that our material has a wall or a brick texture attached to it. Now all I need to do is I need to just drag this onto this wall and you'll see that it changes its texture. 
now it looks like a real wall now here is a property called tiling now tiling what it basically does is it increases the amount of tiles on this texture what you can do is you can increase the tiling but before increasing the tiling what you need to do is you need to go to the bricks sprite and you have to change the wrap mode to repeat and you have to apply it coming back to the material when you select the material and increase the tiling on it you'll see that now it tiles even nicely if you tile it on the y you see the amount of tiles on it increases and gives you a good wall when you keep the shader selected to standard the light distribution on it will be even but when you selected it to sprite to diffuse you saw it has lit up a little bit you can see it in the preview now when you select the specular you will see a shine that comes onto our game object so if you want to create a shiny surface you can just change the shaders to specular specular gives a brightly lit material so this is all about the materials shaders and textures i'll just disable this wall for a moment i'll select the circle and i'll drag and drop the ball inside it i'll remove the material from it i'll make it sprites default the next property is the draw mode the draw mode can be set to three properties simple sliced and tiled when you select the draw mode to simple it will display the sprite to normal when you select the draw mode to be sliced it will give you a warning that it may not appear correctly because it is not generated with full rect what you need to do in this case is you need to go to the ball sprite and you need to change that mesh type from tight to full rect and apply it and after that you can open it up in sprite editor inside of this you can edit it so for example say i want to slice out the center portion i'll drag it up and i click on apply so you will see that the center portion has gone away so when you select the simple it displays the sprite as normal as it can when you click on sliced it will show the sliced portion of it and the third one is the tiled in tiled you can tile it horizontally as well as vertically so if i increase the width of it you will see that it tiles itself horizontally now in tile mode there are two properties that is continuous and adaptive so if i select continuous then it will scale even partially and then complete it to full but when i click on adaptive and when i scale it you'll see that unless and until the full image of the sprite does not come the image does not scale so it stretches itself and then it scales another value whereas in continuous it will scale and create even a half texture also when you set it to adaptive you can see a stretch value here that is how much this will stretch in order to create a new object so if i set it to one and then try to stretch it you'll see it will stretch itself to the maximum before creating a new one whereas if i set it to zero then it will stretch the least in order to create a new one hence it's always best to keep it at 0.5 now the next two properties are sorting layer and the order in layer now we can set the priority of the rendering of the sprites in our unity game that is through sorting layer by default whenever you create a new game object it's always put on the default layer so if you check the layers and click on edit layers you'll see that the default layer is blacked out that is it has been created for you automatically whenever you create a new object it will be put onto this default layer so the game objects that you see here you can see that it is a default layer so water etc default layer the order in layer is the order number of that game object in that sorting layer so in order to understand this i'll drag and drop this square game object onto the scene you'll see that it has got the sorting layer of default and the order in layer of zero now if i drag this onto this ball it covers the ball now why it happens it's because the square has been added after the circle so whichever game object comes first in the hierarchy that is rendered first but suppose i want to change the render order of these two game objects without interchanging their positions so what i can do is i can click on the square i can go to order and layer and i can make it a minus one so now the circle comes on top of the square now i set this order and layer to minus one now the sorting layer set on it is default i have created my own layer here that is top one if you check the layers the default is first and i have created my top one layer i can just keep it this order and layer as it is just change the sorting layer to top one and voila it comes again to the top so this is all about sorting layer and order and layer i change the square size to 0 0.5 i change back its layer to default i change its color to red and bring it behind the bottom now the next property is the mask interaction the values you can set here is visible inside the mask and visible outside the mask now i'll quickly demonstrate how to create the mask here so the way to create the mask is go to game object 2d object sprite mask so you see that a new sprite mask has come here 
there are a few properties here the first property is the sprite what shape do you want to give your mask that is the sprite i'll select a knob i'll scale it a little bit your mask is ready to be used what i'll do is i'll click on the circle the circle here is the football i'll keep the football visible outside mask and i'll take the square i'll make the square's mask interaction property to be visible inside the mask now if i run it and i hover this mask on top of them you will see that you can see the red box inside it's because it has been set to visible inside mask and wherever you hover it that portion of the ball won't be visible but the outside portion of it will be visible so this is how you create a sprite mask now let us switch to scripting now what i will do is i'll change the sprite of the sprite render using code so let's create a c sharp script create c sharp script name it change sprite open it up in visual studio now first we need to get a reference to the sprite renderer what we'll do is we'll write sp Now here, before setting the sprite, we have to declare a sprite variable. Now this sprite variable will be of type public, public sprite, car sprite. And I'll assign the sp.sprite to car sprite. Back to our Unity project. Here, to the circle game object, I'll attach the change sprite script. Now I need to set a variable here. So what I'll do is, I'll just drag and drop this car sprite onto it. Now when I run it, You'll see that the ball has converted into a car. Let's just comment this. We'll change the color of the sprite. The way to do this is by writing sp.color is equal to new color. You have to specify RGB value. I'll specify 1, 0, and 0. Now, if you get back to your Unity project and run this, you'll see that the color of this ball has changed to red. Now if you want to change the transparency of this ball, you can just specify it as the fourth parameter. Here I'll change it to say suppose 0.50f. Let's get back, run it again. So here see that it has become a little transparent. The final property of the sprite renderer is the sprite sort point. The way how the camera measures the distance between the game object and the camera is from the center of the sprite to the camera's transform position. And if you want to change that calculation, you can actually change it by setting it to pivot and you can adjust these values the way how you want it. So then the way of calculating the distance will change according to the pivot position. So I hope you understood about the sprite renderer tool.